The greatest question that could ever be asked is this, how can I have peace with God? How can I know that I have heaven as my home and that I have salvation in my heart? I want to take you very briefly to two portions of scripture. The first one is in John chapter 3. Jesus was meeting with a very religious person, but yet someone who needed to know God's salvation. Nicodemus came to Jesus late one night and they talked back and forth and it's in this passage of scripture in John chapter 3 that we hear perhaps the most well-known and well-beloved single verse of scripture, John chapter 3 and verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus wanted this very religious person to know that it is by God's work that we are saved, that we trust in Him and we look to Him alone for our salvation and have confidence in Him. We pass out of death and into life because Jesus Christ, God's Son, was given to us for our salvation that we might not bear the brunt of the penalty of sin on our own but that he took it for us also in acts chapter 16 the apostle paul who was going all around the mediterranean world telling people of what he had come to know as true he came to the ancient city of philippi and there, because of his proclamation of Christ, he and his companion, Silas, were thrown into jail after having been viciously beaten. But yet that night they were singing praises to God. And there was a violent earthquake, and suddenly the doors flew open, the chains fell off their wrists and ankles, and they could have run for it. They could have been free men, but they stayed and the jailer had been sleeping, but he undoubtedly had first heard them singing praises to God. He comes in, realizes that they're all still there, all of the prisoners are still there, and he falls down in front of Paul and he says, what must I do to be saved? Here is a wonderful response. Now this man was not religious as Nicodemus had been, here was somebody who cared probably very little or nothing for the service of the Lord. But here, let's hear Paul's response. He says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. How does a person have confidence of heaven? They believe on the Lord Jesus Christ they say, I don't have anything to contribute to this bargain or to this deal, but I simply come and call upon the name of Jesus Christ. He is the one who died in my place. I am a sinner and unable to do anything about it. I need a Savior. Jesus is the one, the only Savior who can save you from your sins and who can cleanse your heart, dear friend. I would encourage you to look to him, to trust in him, to say, Lord Jesus, would you forgive me of my sin? I bring it before you. I have sinned against you and I want to be clean. Lord, please accept me and wash me clean. And friend, as you pray that prayer, and as you then go on to walk with Christ and to pray, Lord Jesus, would you make me your disciple and grow in knowing him better and better every day, living a life of surrender to him. He will walk with you. He will come and dwell in your heart and you will be what the Bible calls a new creature in Christ Jesus. I encourage you to take that, lay hold of that today, and you will have passed out of death into life. 
you'll no longer be walking in the dark, but you'll be walking in the light of God's day. And the Bible says that we are dead in our trespasses and sins. So it's really like you've been in a graveyard and you actually get up out of your casket and you really start to live as a disciple of Christ, taking up your cross daily and following after him. My prayer is that God would bless you as you do that very thing. Look to the cross, look to Jesus, who is able to save you and to walk with him and do that today.